Good afternoon, everybody. Brandon Schrage here, Technical Service Manager with FMC in Nebraska. Um, I have you joining me in my truck here outside of a field in York County. Um, I was hoping to do this little video clip out in the field, but surprise, surprise, it's windy in Nebraska. Um, and you probably would have a little difficulty hearing me. Um, so what I want to discuss with you briefly is pigweed control in soybean. Um, and so when we think of pigweeds, we're generally referring to the tall and common water hemp and palmer amaranth. Those are the three most common we find in Nebraska. Um, and soybeans, those are arguably the most troublesome weed species we deal with. And it all stems from the physiology of these different species. So when we think of soybeans and we think of their growth habit, um, we look back at this year and we actually had pretty slow growth in May because of cool temperatures. But unfortunately now, middle of June, um, where we're getting into the middle and upper 90s and it's supposed to be dry for the next couple days, we're actually going to see some slower growth out of them as well. And the reason is, is because soybeans are what's called a C3 plant. Um, your amaranthus species are a C4 plant. And the basic difference here comes down to carbon dioxide efficiency. Uh, the pigweed species are just much better um, at utilizing water, nutrients, and sunlight um, than C3 plants are. And the reason is it gets hot um, and they actually have to close their stomata in order to preserve water. And so the evapotranspiration stream slows, um, growth will ultimately slow, um, but won't is that these pigweeds, and you know, we've seen optimized uh, temperature for photosynthesis of pigweeds take place at over 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are gonna continue to really compete. Um, the soybean growth will slow. And so it's very important to get out there and develop a really good management tactic. Now, the field I'm in um, is kind of a unique situation for the area. It's actually 36 inch rows. And so canopy is quite a ways off. We did have that cooler May, and so growth has been fairly slow. Um, but we do have a, a rather clean field at the moment. Um, we used a very good residual herbicide up front 40 days ago. We used Authority Edge um, at nine fluid ounces. Um, but we're what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is hurry up and get out here and overlay that residual because if we don't, and we start seeing some of these guys, which I picked up from the ditch bank, then it's gonna be very hard to control because we're gonna have to rely on the dicamba technologies and we've all seen how uh, that fiasco has went the couple last couple days. Um, we're gonna have to rely on our list products or we're gonna have to use foliar PPOs to uh, get them as well as glyphosate or uh, glufosinate. Um, and so it pays to be diligent. We really wanna overlap. We wanna get in here with Anthem Max uh, Post with a good broad spectrum product, glyphosate, Liberty, whatever trait stack you're using, you can tank mix with Anthem Max um, and control these. Um, because what's interesting too is these are much more prolific than a lot of our other weed species. So when we think of a good herbicide program, what generally comes to mind is 98 to 99% control because obviously you do have natural resistance mechanisms in all species. You do have different environmental factors. So 100% control season long is largely not gonna happen. But if we can get really good upper 90% control, overlap those residuals and control escapes, we'll take that seed bank down and actually do a better job of getting control and keeping our farmland uh, valuable. Um, if you think about a single uh, female Palmer amaranth plant, you know, they can produce up to 600,000 seeds. And so even if you have a product that is 99% effective, you're still looking at having 6,000 potential seedlings come up. And so that's why we've got to be overlaying those residuals. We've got to be using multiple modes of action and we've got to be using effective posts to manage our escapes. Um, so if you have any questions um, building your weed control program, reach out to me or any other FMC representative and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.